Let's take a look at Backup Exec 20. In a previous video, we went ahead and installed it, so now let's just do a quick overview. And we're starting up. And it starts out with what's new in Backup Exec 20. You can see here they've got some new options for support. They also have the ability to recover non-Windows virtual machines and some new dedupe and other good stuff. Go ahead and close that. You can also, if you want to, scroll down and see all the different things. All right, so we have a couple of different servers that are, have been added in to our Backup Exec 20. And this is the server that it's installed on, the Windows 2016 server, and this is just one of the servers that we have added on. You see that it has various different links at the very top. Let's take a look at the Home tab. And you can see the Home tab has got two rows of icons. However, if you want, you can certainly change that. If you want, you can see three columns, or you can choose one column. And you can scroll down. You can also change to narrow wide. And if you want, you can hit the reset button as well to make it back to the way it was. And here's all the different things you can view. Now, by default, you see what's been checked here. If you want, you want to see as many things. You can go ahead and uncheck them, and you'll see that these things starting to disappear. So just put on the ones that you think are important. But this home screen is good to get a good idea, a quick idea of what's happening on the server or on the backups themselves right now, such as the backup status. Let's go ahead and go to Backup and Restore. And this is where we set up our backup jobs. It's also where we can restore data. So if we wanted to, we could click on the Restore button, and we could restore from a backup job that's previously been done. Now, we don't have any backup jobs to restore from because we just installed it. You also have the option to create a disaster recovery disk, which makes restoring much faster. You can convert a backup to a virtual machine. We can go in and edit our backups. If we want, just double click and expand the job. And you can see you've got a full backup here and an incremental backup after that. So once a week, full backup. And then after every other day, it's going to be an incremental backup. So if you wanted to, you could right click and edit the jobs and change what's being backed up and how often. If we go to the job monitor, we can see backup jobs that have been attempted. And you can see as of now, they've all failed because you haven't really begun to set this up all the way yet. But it gives you an idea of what's happened. And if you want, you could even double click on the backup job and you could see what went wrong. So in this case, it's saying the logon account is, logon account is uh, incorrect. So we need to change the password on that. If we want to go to storage, in a previous video, I actually showed you how to set up storage, but we've got a storage device already here. If we double click on it, we can change some things about the storage, such as the properties, maximum file size. If you make the maximum file size larger or smaller, you can see whether or not it speeds up or slows down your backup. And then you've got other things like the path to the uh, to the volume, uh, instead of using drive letters like it's done in the past, this new version uses um, the hard drive exclusively, so you no longer see it uh, show up in File Explorer. So you only see the volume path to it. You can, however, see it in Computer Management. You can see the drive there. You can also change the low disk warnings as well. And then if, if we click on Jobs at the top, we can see no jobs exist. There's Job History backup sets, and active alerts. Some of these same things you can see in other places. It just depends on where you want to see them. So for instance, the active alerts you'll see in the same place as the job monitor right here. If we go to reports, uh, reports are a little different than alerts. Reports will give you combined information that's happened over a period of time that you choose and to what servers. So if you wanted to create a report, you could do that. Let's go to completed. We haven't completed any. See upcoming, custom, configuration. Let's go ahead and choose manage backup exec. It's creating a report. And you can see there's the backup exec server itself. It is online, et cetera, et cetera. So it would give you a report of all the different devices. You can also create a new scheduled report or create a custom report. So if it doesn't have what it is that you want, 
you can go in and create a custom report. Let's go back to the backup and restore button. That's this is the place where I usually leave my uh, my uh, default page to backup and restore. Go ahead and click on the servers. There we go, and it shows me what the latest backup has done. We can see these various different failed backup jobs. That's because we haven't really set them up properly yet. Um, so it gives me at a glance an idea of how things are backed up. I find this even more useful than the home tab, just because the home tab sort of overwhelms you with with information. But you can certainly customize that if you want. Uh, the job monitor is another good tab that I like to be in, just because it gives me the job histories all at once and whether or not uh, you know they, they actually backed up properly. But for the most part, I like to live here in Backup and Restore. Uh, from here, I can go ahead and not only see the jobs, but I can also edit the jobs just by double clicking on a server, as I showed you earlier, and edit those jobs. If we go into the upper left-hand corner, this is where you can do a lot of your configuration. You can do installation and licensing, you can run updates, uh, various different things here, install agents on other servers. Uh, you can go to configuration, set the job defaults, go up to backup exec settings. And I definitely recommend you do go into the backup exec settings and make a few changes uh, just to get it the way you want it to be, such as um, storage. So if we go down to storage, by default, the hard drives on the storage are just gonna fill up. So uh, what you want to do is you want to change this to show that you do not want to have any protection for storage and you don't want to be prompted for storage. Otherwise, the hard drive will fill up. You'll have no idea it even happened unless you're checking your alerts. This way, what it does is at the end of the uh, specified time, say two weeks or four weeks when you set up your, your backup jobs, you'll see that option. Um, then it will go ahead and automatically overwrite the oldest job. So I find this to be one of the uh, easier ways of dealing with those uh, you know, uh, hard drives being filled up too early. I also like to go into Veritas uh, Update, and you see here it will check for updates daily. It will send an alert notification when they become available, um, or you can choose the download updates first and then send the alert uh, notification. However, the problem with that is, is sometimes it will cause a reboot to happen, and if this is a production server used for more than just backup, then you don't necessarily want to have this thing uh, running inst installation of any updates without notifying you first. You could also just uncheck it and then just manually run the update by clicking here to run the Veritas update. If we go back to our button in the top left, you can also see there's some technical support, uh, help and documentation, and uh, some of these are fairly useful. There's also, if you go to Veritas.com, you can create a free logon account and get access to all of their help as well. So there's an overview of Veritas Backup Exec 20, and it's a, a very robust backup system, Re lets you know when you have problems, gives you lots of good options.